God forgotten and blessings lost. There are a few people now who are waking up to the facts of biblical prophecy, particularly in these secular empowered times. I should say secular overpowered times. But some now see the literal and spiritual connection of God's blessings upon Israel, which have followed through to their descendants, the European nations, commonwealths, and even America. Some can see the links set forth by God in prophecy as type and example, such as Manasseh, the son of Joseph, and his example through prophecy of the United States. Manasseh, if you don't know what his name means, his name stands for forgetful. And the United States seems to have forgotten our father, our creator. At least, some have. We allow the cunning and corrupt to dupe the irresponsible and unlearned who, by the way, seem to outnumber the wise. And we have allowed them to represent us for selfish reasons to elect godless men to power. Or, men who claim God with their lips, but by their actions show they are not of or for God. As a matter of fact, for the most part, they show they are at variance with God. But just as in the Bible, in biblical history, there are those who have merged themselves into God's children, who seek nothing less than to destroy God and His, and his influence from amongst us. They have seen to it that our heritage and our history has been lost, forgotten. They have rewritten our history and changed the truth of our Constitution and our founding to mean something it never was intended to mean. To be something it never was intended to be. Secular. They deny the truth as they bring forth power and control by their interpretations and ideology, which is governed by their own selfish, perverse, unwise desires and agenda, and is cultivated through mankind due to biblical illiteracy, scriptural ignorance in other words. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32, which contains the Song of Moses, God warned of this happening. And we will now go to the book of Deuteronomy and read chapter 32. But before we do, let's ask our Father for wisdom in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we ask your divine guidance. We ask that you give us wisdom, Father, that you open our eyes to the truth, that you reveal to us things lost and things hidden, that we may better understand your plan. We ask your blessing upon this study, Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Deuteronomy 32 is basically the Song of Moses. It is Moses signing off, you might say, because this would be written just a month or so before Moses was to ascend upon the mountain and pass away. But these were his final words to the children of Israel. So, the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter 32, and verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, 
and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Verse 2. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. This is referring, of course, to the former and latter rain. The former rain, which causes the seed to germinate and sprout forth, and the latter rain, which causes the harvest. Verse 3. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. Verse 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. Verse 5. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Now you can take this how you like, but this is talking of man's turning away from God, but moreover it's talking about those of the synagogue of Satan, the offspring of Cain, who have helped to corrupt man and hide the truth and censor that which is right all down through history. And boy are they at work now here in America. Verse 6, Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath brought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee, thy elders and they will tell thee. This means consider the past, our rich spiritual heritage, the way things used to be. Verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of, in, of his inheritance. And Jacob, of course, refers to Israel. Jacob would be called Israel, and Israel means the prince that prevails with God. Without God, he shall not prevail. Verse 10. He found him in a desert land, and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. And if you go into the Hebrew, you'll find that this word apple is actually the word pupil. He kept him as the pupil of his eye. And you can imagine why this analogy is used. Think about your eye and how just the smallest piece of dust or trash can cause great irritation. This is how Father feels about his children. Verse 11. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. Verse 12. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Now this is an example, these two verses, of, first of all, the eagle protecting her young, fluttereth over her nest. In other words, fierce to protect her own, as God is fierce to protect his own. And God alone did lead them, and there was no other God, no false God, no idol with him. Verse 13. He made him to ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. He made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Verse 14. Butter and kind in the milk of sheep with the fat of lambs and the rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat 
and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. In other words, there was plenty. This would be God's promise fulfilled to Jacob and the children of Israel, right on down to the rich European heritage, even to America, the superpower of all superpowers. In other words, there would always be plenty. And in this next verse, verse 15, we're going to hear of Jeshurun. Jeshurun is a pet name for Israel. It was a name given to them when they forsook God, when they turned upon him, when they rebelled against him. So verse 15. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked, which means rebel, rebelled. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook the God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Has this not happened in America today? And in Britain? And in a lot of Europe? But specifically in America, think of our government today. And it's moved toward the hard left. With its progressive secular agenda and the large number of communists and socialists which surround even our president and his cabinet. Yet they don't call themselves by that name. Because that would reveal the truth of who and what they are. No, they call themselves progressives. Not communists, not socialists, even though that is what they are. Verse 15, or 16. They provoked him, meaning God, to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. Again, think of our government. Think of all the perverse things that they are pushing on the people. Gay marriage. Think of the richness of this land. The plenty that we have that we're not allowed to tap into. The oil, the coal. All for environmental reasons. It's a sham. It is a cover to hide the true agenda. Verse 17. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods, if you'll notice the lower case, G there, whom they knew not. To new gods, which came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Basically, because they didn't exist. Whenever you see the word God or gods in lowercase, it is a method of understanding the Bible better because it means a false God. When God is capitalized, it stands for our Father, God Almighty. Verse 18 Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful. In other words, you've forgotten him. Well, and hast forgotten the God that formed thee. Verse 19. And when the law saw it, he abhorred them. Because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. In other words, his own children. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. Uh, forward meaning evil and perverse, a children who have turned their back on God, in other words. A children who believe that they've outgrown God and his influence. Verse 21, they have moved me to jealousy which, with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, which means emptiness. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. In other words, with those who are not their people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. And this nation is speaking of the children of Cain, the small people the stages of the locust. Inevitably, the offspring of Satan himself through what happened in the Garden of Eden. 
If you do not understand that, I recommend you go into the book of Genesis and trace it back to the old languages, because I assure you, Eve did not eat an apple and commit sin, as is taught in many churches. Verse 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. And that is coming. Verse 23. I will heap mischiefs, which is to say troubles, upon them. I will spend my arrows upon them. Verse 24. They shall be burnt with hunger. If you consider the words of Amos chapter 8, the famine for the end times is not for bread, but for hearing the word of God. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat, which is to say consumption, and with bitter destruction. And this, of course, you can relate to many of the things that go on now in the world. AIDS and various other diseases which cannot be healed. I will also send teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. And this again is another analogy. It's not actually snakes. It is referring to Satan and his own, even his own children, the sons of Cain, the Kenites. If you do not understand who the Kenites are, or the seed of Satan, then I recommend you listen to uh, my study lecture called Satan's Seed, Cain's Progeny. Verse 25. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also the man of gray hairs. In other words, it's going to affect everybody. Verse 26. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. And as I pointed out earlier, many today do not even know our heritage. They do, know, do not know that America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand came from Britain, the United Kingdom, which came from the Germanic tribes, who in turn came from the children of Israel, the ten northern tribes on their migration. So what God is saying here is, I will scatter them into corners, in other words, the four corners of the earth, and I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. In other words, they will not remember who they are. They will have lost the knowledge. And sadly, even today, Many do not remember our Christian heritage from less time ago. Verse 27. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this, they behave themselves strangely because they have no reverence to God. And they say, the Lord hath not done this. In other words, secular ideology, scientific points of view, evolution. Man evolved from apes, the Big Bang Theory. God didn't have anything to do with that. That's exactly the kind of thing our Father's talking about here. And destruction of the earth. They, uh, they believe that man is going to destroy the earth. Of course, they have believed this for a long time. They believed in a nuclear war, yet it hasn't happened. And they believe in global warming. Yet we know from science and from history that the earth has constantly gone from cooling to heating cycles. That there were once palm trees on the north and south poles. Nevertheless, their ideology is pushed forth and taught as fact. Verse 28. They are a nation. Do you hear that? Nation. They are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Why? Because they seek not the love of the truth. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Our president is the first president ever 
to declare that America is no longer or is not a Christian nation. He is the first president ever to not celebrate the National Day of Prayer since its induction. Verse 29. Old they that are wise, they that understand this, they that would consider their latter end, or their uh, latter end. In other words, what he's saying here is, oh, if they could only understand this, if they were only wise, if they only studied his word where they could know, if they would consider their latter end. In other words, what's going to happen to them at judgment? And specifically the latter end, these end times. Verse 30. How should one chase a thousand or two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up. In other words, when we stand, God stands with us. When we go to battle, God goes with us. That's what the analogy here is, how should one chase a thousand or two put ten thousand to flight? Even with superior numbers, America has never been defeated in a war. And there will be those that say, yes, but what about Vietnam or Korea, as is pointed out by some others. Those wars were not lost. They were stalemates. Verse 31. For their rock is not as our rock. Note the lower case in the first rock, their rock, and the capital rock, our rock. even our enemies themselves being judges. In other, in other words, holding the power of, of executive decision and law. Their rock is not our rock. And they are our enemy because they are against God. And they do hold the power of, of executive decision and of the law, the judicial system. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are the grapes of gall, which means bitterness. Their, clutter, their clusters are bitter. Again, who is supposed to be the vine? The blood of the New Testament. When we take communion, what do we take it with? Wine. Because Christ is our vine, but their vine is Sodom and Gomorrah, which means perversion, self-centeredness, man's lust, man-pleasing. Again, perversion, secularism. Is this not made manifest fully now? Their wine is the poison of dragons. Who is the old dragon of the book of Revelation? The serpent. And the cruel venom of asps, which are snakes, which again refers right back to the serpent. Wine is symbolic of the truth and of our vine, Jesus Christ. But their wine, which is false, which is poison, leads to death. And who is death? Hebrews chapter 1, it's Satan. And not only death the uh, being, but the death of the soul. Verse 34. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? In other words, is God not keeping account of it? Have you ever heard of the Lamb's Book of Life? Where the names were read of those who made salvation verse 35 to me belongeth vengeance and recompense their foot shall slide in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand and the things that shall come upon them make haste their foot shall slide in time is an analogy like if you walk out onto ice or slippery wet uh, ground it means they have no footing they're gonna slip and fall their calamity is at hand. Verse 36. 
For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. When he seeth their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. In other words, none who know the truth. Verse 37. And he shall say, Where are their gods? Their rock whom men they trusted, or whom they trusted. In other words, where are their false gods now? Where is their false Christ? Verse 38. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices, and drank the wine of their offerings. Let them rise up and help you, and be your protection. They can't, because they don't exist. Verse 39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God, lowercase, with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Verse 40. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. Verse 41. If I whet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and re will reward them that pay me or that hate me. And this, of course, uh, will take vengeance and will reward them that hate me means pay them back. There's quite a large number of them who think they're getting away with all this secularism and pushing God out. But on the day of judgment, when they stand naked before him, they will not be so bold or cocky. They will be abased. Verse 42. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood. My sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain, of the captives, from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. In other words, it's going to go all the way back, even to the first one slain, righteous Abel. This is even referring to the Kenites, the children of Cain, the Nethanim, the sons of Rechab, the scribes and the Pharisees, the synagogue of Satan in our time. It has nothing to do with the tribe of Judah, nothing to do with the Jew, only those who call themselves Jews who are not but not of the true line of Judah. Verse 43. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of servants, and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. Who are his people? Those that love the Lord. And who are his adversaries? Anyone who stands against him, Anyone who says that we have to have separation of church and state by the modern definition of it rather than the intended definition set forth by our founders who were religious men, who were people of faith. Verse 44. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people. And he and Hosea the son of Nun. This, of course, is an old spelling of Joshua. Hosea. Verse 45. And Moses made an end of this speaking of all these words to all Israel. Verse 46. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to do and observe all the words of this law. Verse 47. For it is not a vain thing, which, which means an empty thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing ye shall prolong your days on the land, whether you go over Jordan to possess it. In other words, as they entered the promised land. And from Jordan, it would go for, from every place that Israel did go and set their foot upon land, that they did possess it by the will and grace of God. But just as God has said from the words of his servant Moses and many others through this great word of his, man has corrupted himself and turned against his father and forgotten his creator. Man has become haughty. But man has had help in doing this from the children of Cain 
who are now the secular progressive movement, which has been slowly taking power over the decades in this nation, which has been slowly enacting subtle little initiatives and policies which have dumbed down and wiped the minds of many of the last few generations as they have taken over the educational institutions and the media outlets, information outlets, and the political arenas and changed policies. These progressives say our nation was founded secular. When history, even the very writings of the founders themselves call these progressives liars to their very faces. But they have a method for dealing with that because they know that this people is a forgetful people. That people do not learn the past. And that is in large part thank to, thanks to this dumbing down and this disinformation which has been being taught over the last five to six decades. If you go back and look at the school system pre-1940s, pre-1920s, you'll see God and prayer not only uh, in it, but endorsed. But not now. Now you can't even discipline a child because it might hurt his feelings. And history has been revised and changed by lies. By different views in political correctness. But it has been changed not by accident, but with purposeful, malicious intent. And that is how Satan and his children work. They do not achieve conquest by battle. They conquer with words. They change perception. They use subtlety. They change the meaning of words. They work slowly, but never cease moving forward towards their goal. Even if it's in milli inches. And they use man's forgetfulness and man's laziness and man's self-righteous wants and lust as their tools. They speak of freedom, liberty, and truth. But their actions prove that they are not concerned with freedom, liberty, or truth. Some claim to reverence God, yet in his own church have they infiltrated and corrupted the truth. And changed God's word or censored God's word to fit their purpose and agenda. And the victims are the biblically illiterate lay people who can't recognize the difference between the truth and the lies they have been indoctrinated with. And this is nothing new. It's simply a replay of what has been. For when Jesus walked the earth, they had also infiltrated the church of his time. In fact, in his day, We had the type set forth as an example to us. Even the same bloodline, the children of Cain, had become the scribes and Pharisees of the church. They had infiltrated Israel in the time of Joshua by deceiving Joshua. But by the time Christ came along, they had overtaken the church and become the scholars, the teachers. They had made God's temple into a money-making racket rather than a place of truth and prayer. And what did they accomplish? The death of our Lord and Savior. With words. Yes, with words, with accusations. They sought to trip him up in his own words, but never could. So they resorted to the next step, which is to say they persecuted him and put him on trial and caused his crucifixions. And they changed the perceptions of the people. The people saw Jesus walk in the streets and speak the truth. The people saw him do miracles, and they were astonished by his words. Yet they were drawn off course by the power of the corrupt leaders of the church at that time their so-called religious advisors and guides, which were at that time entrenched in the church, just as it is now. They held the power then, and they hold the power now, inasmuch as is allowed by God to bring forth and fulfill 
his purpose and will. The negative part of his plan. Even so, God warned us of them. But let's think of America as it was before this progressive influence had taken so much power. Before it was illegal to teach certain parts of the Bible. Before murder went unpunished. Before murder of the unborn was condoned. Before man was taught that God didn't exist and that he evolved from the primordial ooze into apes. Before you were snickered at for having faith, when children did not kill children in schools, when gangs didn't own the streets, when perversion was not seen as a normal lifestyle, in short, when America was not rebelling against God, and was blessed as no other nation before her or since. Before her history was changed and rewritten. Turn with me again to the book of Deuteronomy. This time to chapter 28. And let's read the correlation of prophecy and see what was and what is now. So verse 1 of chapter 28 of the book of Deuteronomy. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all his commandments, which I have commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee, above, set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Think about that. Think about how Israel went through the land killing off the offspring of the fallen angels, the giants. And think of the United States, the superpower of superpowers. And you might understand this saying, that is, unless you're a progressive who hates America and wants to destroy her and make her seem just like any other nation. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. See, there's always a qualifier there. If you shall listen to God, you'll have these blessings. Verse 3. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket, and thy store. In other words, you're going to have plenty. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. Blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. And the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. And they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. In other words, they're going to scatter. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thy storehouses. And in all that thou settlest thine hand to, he shall bless thee in the land that the Lord thy God hath given thee. And this is not talking about just the promised land over the river Jordan. It's talking about anywhere where Israel and her descendants have gone. Even the United States. Verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. What is it it says on our money and in our pledge? One nation under God, in God we trust. And now they want to take that off the money and take it out of the pledge. Verse 10. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. One nation under God. And they shall be afraid of thee. Who is that superpower of superpowers of the end times? For the present. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of the ground, in the land that the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give unto thee. Verse 12. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain, unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, 
And thou shalt lend to many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. Do you understand how many nations like Japan and China and Russia are buying up our debt? We used to feed them grain. We used to ship them oil. Think of it the way it is now. But you see, that's part of the plan of the children of Cain, is to take us from being the superpower of superpowers and make us just a voice in the chorus. To make us just a nation of the one world system, not the leader. Verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. That means you're going to be the prime one. The head of the world. The leader of the world. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee to do this day, to observe and do them. Again, the qualifier. Verse 14, And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods, lowercase, to serve them. And you can make anything a god. Anything you put before God is an idol. It can be your car. It can be any project, any hobby you have. If you put it before God, it becomes your idol. Not necessarily an idol of worship, but what do you do? You spend all your time doing it. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass... Now see, here, here's, here's the cursings. Here come the cursings. This is what's going to happen if you don't obey God. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and do all the commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon ye, thee, thee and overtake thee. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Think of our cities today. How much violence surrounds them. Gang warfare. Drugs. Why? Because the laws aren't enforced. Because instead of putting someone in jail and keeping them there, or putting them to death when they do wrong, such as murder, or rape, or pedophilia, we adopt a honey dripper attitude, a bleeding heart attitude. We must help them, rehabilitate them. We must not kill them because then we're no better than them. Bleeding hearts, and this is what they've accomplished. Verse 17 Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Think of the taxation today. How hard it is to eke out a living. Verse 7. Or verse 18. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Again, you won't have enough. Cursed shall, be, cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. Verse 20. And the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke. And all thou settest thine hand to, unto, for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. In other words, you have forsaken God, and you're going to reap the reward. Verse 21. And the Lord shall make thee pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. Verse 22. And the Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with extreme burning, which is to say fever, and with the sword, and with the blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Think about what AIDS does to the body. Consumes it right down to nothing. People will come up with the idea that AIDS is not a curse. Well, it's not necessarily a curse set on us by God, but promised by God. In the same way that if you go and eat animal dung, you're going to get sick and die. If you go and eat things that are rotten, you're going to get sick and die. 
It is the law of humanity. That if you do that which is against the natural order, you will become sick and perish. Or you will be sick for a very long time and very ill. Verse 23. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth underneath shall be iron, which is to say hardened. Verse 24. And the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. And from heaven it shall come down upon thee, until thou be destroyed. You ever seen a dust storm? When there's not enough moisture? How do you think a lush forest becomes a desert? Verse 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, and shalt be removed unto all the kingdoms of the earth. In other words, this is exactly the opposite of what he had promised if we hearken unto him. In other words, they shall have the upper hand. Think about 9-11. Think about the bombing of the USS Cole. Think about the homegrown terrorists. This is what happens when a nation turns its back on God. It loses its blessings. And then only those who reverence God have the blessings, even amongst the, that land which has turned its back on God. Verse 26. And thy carcasses shall be meat unto the fowls of the air, and to the beast of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. Verse 27. And the Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, which is to say the, the plagues, with emrods, which is to say hemorrhoids, with scab, with itch, wherefore of thou cannot be healed. Again, think of the diseases that have come out now, which cannot be healed. AIDS, herpes, various others. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of the heart, which is to say, confusion. And why are people confused? Because they don't know the truth. No, they would rather argue with you that there is no God. Verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled even more, and no man shall save thee. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, and not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Again, taxation, infidelity, all these things which come about on a nation which has turned its back on God. You're going to plant a vineyard, but you're not going to eat of it. You're going to build a house, but you're not going to live in it. You're going to marry a wife, but other men will lay with her. Sound familiar? Verse 31. Thy ox shall be slain before thy eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and thou shalt not, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemies, and thou shalt have none to go rescue them. In other words, that which you have worked for shall be taken away from you and given to others, and you won't do anything about it. Communism, socialism, overtaxation, bleeding heart do-gooderism. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Think of the lost generations who care not for the truth, who are going to be deceived, who are going to be taken by deception. Think of your children who spend time in jail because they have no morals, because they did drugs, because they drove drunk and killed somebody, or for whatever reason. The violence. 
rebellious youth unleashed. Verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Why would you not know the nation? Because the truth has not been told about them. The Kenites, the sons of Cain, the progressive liberal secular machine, and political correctness which serves multiculturalism to the point that it makes the righteous man out to be bigoted if he complains about what is being taken from him unjustly. The reverse discrimination attitude. Self-righteous. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away. Why? Again, they turn their back on God. And you can turn your back on God in a lot of ways. Not knowing his truth is turning your back on God. Verse 34. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which shall see. In other words, you're going to be angry. You're going to be angry because these communists have come in and they're taking what you earn and giving it to those who are not even of your people. Many people would say, well that sounds racist. No, it's not. All are God's children, but we do have laws that we have to go by. And when people enter this country illegally, they are breaking the law. It doesn't matter if they come from an oppressed country. They still have to become as us so that they can be taxed and pay into the system as we do. Otherwise, they are living off of us. And that is communism. That is Karl Marx's vision. Verse 35. And the Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore box that cannot be healed. And the sole of thy, from the sole of thy foot to the top of thy, of thy head. Again, diseases. Pestilences. Verse, 20, er, verse 36. And the Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee. Notice it says thou shalt set over thee, not that he set over thee. Unto a nation which neither thou or thy fathers have known. And there thou shalt serve other gods, wood and stone. This is kind of twofold. Because the United States has become a nation now, which is not the nation many of us have grown up in. A nation which does serve false gods, false idols, self-indulgence. Whether they be gods of religious ideology, or idolatry, which is to say false gods, or secularism. Secularism is a religion. It is a set of values, a creed, a set of guidelines to live by. Secularism is a religion. Verse 30, it's just a deityous religion. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all, all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Verse 38. Thou shalt carry out, or thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, but thou shalt gather little in. For the locusts shall concern it. What locusts? Have you ever heard of the four stages of the locust? The canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust itself? The four hidden dynasties? The children of Cain? Which empower much of this modern, secular, progressive ideology and movement? What does it mean when you take much seed out into the field but gather a little back? Because it's consumed by the locusts. Most people think of this like it is in Africa where the locusts come and consume it all. Well, it is, but this is a spiritual connotation. This means you're going to work hard but gather very little. Because you're going to be taxed to death. You're going to be penalized. You're going to be levied. Verse 39. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but thou shalt neither drink the wine of, uh, of the neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. Remember what I said about the canker worm and the palmer worm being four stages of the locust. Again, this is taxation, 
the entitlement mentality where you who pay tax pay for those who are lazy and won't work or who don't work. It's socialism. It's communism. It is what is happening to our nation. Verse 40. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine oil, olive shall cast his fruit. In other words, you're, you're not going to gather it. Verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Think about the strife between parents and children now, the generation gap, specifically teenagers, college age. They rebel, they will not see truth, and many of them will be deceived. Verse 42. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. Again, you won't be able to eke out a living. You won't have any increase. Everything will be eaten up. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. The stranger, meaning those who are not of us, some claim they are. Again, we're talking about Cain's offspring, the Kenites, and their politically correct policies. This also refers to those people who are not of us, but who drain us dry as they collect our social security and WIC and HUD and welfare, and they're not even American citizens. They reap the rewards of entitlement, which are paid for by our high taxation. You will pay full price for your house, but they will get a HUD home for one quarter what you pay. You will pay full price for your groceries, but they will get welfare. You will pay full price for your children's education, but they will have grants. Is this not the stranger getting high over thee and you being brought down low? Could God make this any plainer to you? Verse 44. <coughs> he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shall be the tail. In other words, the roles reversed. The worker supports the lazy, the law-abiding made out to be the criminal, and so on. The American made to serve the foreigner. The multicultural honey dripper do mentality. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not to the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep all his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. You haven't listened to God. You haven't studied his word. You have blindly elected, elected secular communists to power, given them power over you and your nation. And they have taken God away from you. They have taken prayer out of schools. They have legalized the murder of the unborn. They have prohibited you teaching even in church parts of the Bible which speak against homosexuality and they call it a hate crime. Do you understand what our Father is trying to impart to you here? Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of hearts, for the abundance of all things. In other words, for the blessings he's given you. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord God shall send against thee, in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in want of all things. And ye shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. In other words, you're going to be made the slave. A slave to the grind. Verse 49. And the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, as a swift eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance, which thou shalt not regard the person of old, nor show favor towards the young, or show favor to the young. Verse 51. And he shall eat the fruit of thine cattle, the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave either corn, nor wine, nor oil, nor increase of thy kind, flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. Again, we're talking about the Kenites here, the stages of the locust. 
verse 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, until the high fence walls come down wherein thou trusted throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Verse 53. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, and the flesh of thy sons and daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege, and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. You ever heard it said, Father shall betray son, mother shall betray daughter? Verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you, and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother, and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Verse 55. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children, whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left in him in the siege, in the straightness wherewith the enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. In other words, what this is referring to is even the fathers are not going to take care of the children. Even the mother shall betray the daughter because of the distress that is going to be put on them. People will turn to drugs or turn to whatever, drinking, turn to whatever their little hobbies are or lusts are and forsake the family and forsake their own children. Verse 56 And the tender and delicate woman among you which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot on the ground for delicateness or tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter. Verse 57. And toward her young that cometh out from between her feet. In other words, her own, her, her own offspring. And toward her, cho- her children that she shall bear. Or that, she, yeah, she shall bear. And she shall eat them for want of things secretly in the siege of straightness wherewith the enemies distress thee. And this, of course, is not talking about actually eating your own children, but it, it is a spiritual connotation. Verse 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law, which are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, verse 59, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and Plague thy plagues thy plagues of thy seed, and even great plagues of long continuance, and of sore sickness, and of long continuance. In other words, until you turn around and come back to him. In other words, this this curse is set from the time that this word was given all the way to the end for any of God's children who turn their back on him. Verse sixty. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave to thee. The plagues, in other words. Verse 61. Also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Verse 62. And ye shall be few in number, whereas ye were once as the stars of heaven for multitude because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Verse 63, And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over thee, rejoiced over you to do you good and multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked from off the land where the Lord, uh, whither thou goest to possess it. Verse 64, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all the people, from one end of the earth even to the other. And thou shalt serve other gods, which neither neither thou nor thy father have known, gods of wood and stone. Verse 65. Uh, And among among these nations... Thou shalt find no ease, which means no rest. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. In other words, trembling of heart, fear, 
failing eyes, no eyes to see, and sorrow of mind, confusion, and no peace of mind because of what's happening. Verse 66, And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and thou shalt have none assurance in thy life. In other words, no rest, no ease of mind. Verse 67, In the morning thou shalt say, Were to God it would evening, and in the even thou shalt say, Would to God it were morning. For the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. In other words, you're not going to have any rest. You're not going to have any peace of mind. You're going to work. All your goods are going to be taken from you. You're going to become a slave. Verse 68 to complete this. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you, in other words, free you. And that's exactly as it is today. We aren't sold in chains of bondage, as we think of slavery and bondage, but don't pay your taxes and see what happens to you. And see if you make enough to do anything but get by. Or have a little. And consider if you aren't a slave. Consider what usury, credit cards, and so forth have done to us. And these stores where you can go in and pay for something over a period of years but pay six times more. And consider what you'll pay for a house now. $20,000 pile of lumber, steel, and bricks, and you'll pay $170,000 for it. Think what will happen to you if you fail to work. You won't have anything. But others who are not really of us shall have the things. The entitlements. Because of those they elect into power. And those the bleeding hearts elect into power. Because those who get elected will dole out hand and fist entitlements and gifts to, the, to these people as they break our nation and do away with our blessings. And there's nothing racial in this. This extends to any people, any color, especially those who have come from the other nations and seen the oppression of the nations they left and come here and become Americans and made something of themselves and are now being taxed into the very fires of hell. At any rate, I hope you can see the correlation here. I'm sorry I uh, stumbled over so much of this, but my eyesight is not what it once was. At any rate, it is my prayer for you that you will not be deceived, that you do see these things, that you do see this secular progressive movement for what it is, communism, and how the prophecies from our Father's Word are being fulfilled daily. And I hope you will turn your face back to the Lord and ask his guidance and his wisdom and study his word and gain back his blessings so that when these sore vexations and these plagues come upon us, you will not be a victim of them. May God be with you and help you in your study to understand his word and give you to drink of that living water and that true fruit of the vine. Thank you for listening. This has been Just Thoughts.